supposed to do it, right? The residential facility, I was, I was able to get a good look at that too. Amazing. Yeah, thanks. That was uh, Rob Porter Sheridan, an architectural firm in New York City, um, uh, designed it. And, uh, Based off sketches that I drew on a napkin. That's right. Late that's at right. night, so <laughs> don't give them all the credit. <laughs> yeah, it was all Matt. Um, yeah, we just we wanted something to uh, just the history of that location is somewhat important. There's a an old house there that dates back to 1793, and it's sort of a museum piece for historic preservation nuts. They when when we bought the property, we had people cold calling us, telling us like, please don't knock that house down. The house was falling into the ground, mm. and through neglect, it actually and it wasn't even like conscious neglect, just through not people not having the means to do you know upkeep. Um, they, it never had the it has the original doors, the original hardware, hinges, fixtures. I mean, it's 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 a, like a museum in there, you know. And we were able to pull the plaster back on the wall, shore up the foundation, and get it, you know, situated, just restore it, basically, not not reinvent it or, you know, up, uh, modernize it. So we close it in the winter. It has no insulation. Anyway, long story short, that whole f area there, the, whole, the, the field where the new building is, I, I really wanted to respect the fact that this old house has been there for 250 years. And so we spent a lot of time citing where this new building was going to go we wanted it close enough that if we had groups sharing the two buildings they could be right there with each other and share meals and you know hang out and whatever um, but I, I didn't want it to just be this imposing monolith sticking out of the ground you know um, so Ted had the idea the architect had the idea of well, well let's you know push it into the hillside get it as low as possible and um, and de and develop the idea from there. So it's a passive solar design. It's got two envelopes that are completely independent of each other. Um, so there's just thermal breaks everywhere. So it, for cold air to infiltrate the building takes literally days. If it's freezing cold and you didn't have any heat on in there, it would take days for the for the cold to event and work its way in. So uh, I mean, a testament to it was last year we had um, an outage. Uh, one of the heat pumps. That heats the main section of the of the of the building was out for four days, and the temperature dropped to 64 degrees in mm -hmm. in the main section of the in the building, and, and really just in the mornings, like they would gain the heat back um, through just the sun coming through the you know the radiation from the sun coming through. So that cool stuff, notwithstanding, for clients, it's quiet and it's solid and it feels good. Yeah, it does. I agree. It's really comfortable. It's I mean, it's very um, kind of the lines and everything are. Uh, it's very austere and it's you know line. It's there's not a lot of um, what's the word you know. Um, frou frou. Yeah, <laughs> frou frou. It's yeah, it's just it has lots of clean lines, you know, and it's it's not very lived in yet, you know. It just we haven't had a we haven't like completely finished furnishing that that area when you first walk in and um, and everything. So there's a, a little bit of. A, um, development that we, st we still need to you know make it feel more comfortable but the rooms themselves each room that people stay in are just are, are like in my opinion perfect they're just little sanctuaries you just go in there you close the door it's really quiet in there you can't you know the outdoors if you want to listen to the outdoors you can open the window but um, it's when the windows close you can't hear anything it's like really silent so very comfortable people um, remark when you know when they stay there that they get a very solid night's sleep and yeah you want to talk about some of the clients well, that you've had come through in these probably still the most, early days yeah in the early well I mean, we've had a lot of just a lot of local things from school choirs to singer songwriters to rock bands like um like carton you know um the place is still relatively new i built it first before you know really garnering i had i had lots of people from new york we you know had a studio in new york and um, I didn't, uh, I haven't been incredibly aggressive about getting those people to come up here. Um, so just letting it grow organically. 
Um, that said, I mean, probably the most notable person was Valerie June, who came in last year, who's an up-and-coming singer-songwriter from East, uh, no, West, te- uh, West Tennessee. Is her hair real? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that beautiful, the dread, of all those dreads, yeah. Yeah, it's real. Beautiful hair, yeah. She's she's incredible. It's just such, just sweet as pie and just really easy to work with. And, and she had a, just a super group. So we did a lot of live tracking with them, uh, more isolation than we're doing today. But spending a lot of time, Matt Marinelli was the uh, the engineer. He's a phenomenal engineer and just kind of does a lot of different things. He's an expert in many areas of life, and and he so he engineered it and he also played on it. And so they would just play tunes um, together in the live room. Uh, did they have when Andy was playing guitar in there? Did they have the amp in the room or did they isolate the amp? We we just headphones? play around like as there was one song where we decided that no one was gonna wear headphones and that that's like kind of where I got the idea for the Super Six because they they say they used they pumped her vocals through that like over in the corner of the room and it just sounded. <laughs> breakout bands currently from yeah it's funny because it's kind of like has like a seasonal lineup almost the what the flight thing because there's like you know people have come and gone moved away and then bands break up and you know i think officially when we dubbed it what whatever we do what the life in 2010 there was like there was a band giant travel that bruce ryan and i played in and then carton kind of evolved from that and then uh, yeah, and we got uh, that that LP that Ryan referenced um, that we put out um, this past year. Got a nice review in seven days, and we made through. Yeah, we recorded that here as well. Year and best of lesson. Yeah, we recorded that here a year and a half ago. So uh, we have uh, a little prior experience working with David and that, and we're just so super to work with, and this place yeah. is just so amazing. It's heaven on earth. It yeah, is. So we're it's just so happy to be come on down now. Able to Incredible come back fun. and be invited to come back and work with these guys. It's just yeah, Guilford Sound, this place is, is tremendous. It's a world-class recording facility in southern Vermont, mm-hmm. and the owner, Dave Snyder, he knows what he's doing, and can work with a breadth of clients. Yeah. And you guys, you guys are punky. We're pretty loud. You're loud. You're we're crunchy. Pretty guitar. Yeah, pretty we're a good noise rock <laughs> guitar band, you know. Yeah. But he's yeah. done but percussion ensembles. He's done yeah. classical yeah. vocals. Yeah, yeah. Solo uh, clarinet. Yeah. 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 It's it's Brian's it's project. It's my, it's my side project. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's GuilfordSound.com if people want to check that out. Yeah, definitely check definitely it out. Definitely check it out. The yeah. facility is, is very very beautiful. And it's it's more beautiful in person than, it, than it looks. Yeah. Anymore, so believe it or not, a lot of great equipment. Amazing mm-hmm. equipment and and amazing like you said, Dave and Matt are just like amazing and fun to work with. Yeah. They they know what they're doing, and they're, they're laid back. They're laid back. And, and they're also, like, helpful in telling you to try it again. And community <laughs> supporting. I mean, this this yeah, thing totally. yeah. for these two days, it's about supporting local bands. And, support and local music, you know, like, yeah. the resource for just supporting uh, everything and having the community access uh, television involved is very exciting as well. Yeah. Yes, Fact Date is filming. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, really yeah, yeah, the fact that, that Guilford, um, you know, devoted this much of their time and their resources and days and prep and we were here last night till real pros 12 30 i yeah. guess or yeah even later it's, than that. Setting up. So yeah. it's their long days you know it's hard work and uh but it's awful fun and we're just so happy to be here
soil keeps slipping, decomposing and tearing. So they say, away from the sound, that you understand, but you really are. like to work with? <laughs> um, really easy. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, I knew what I was going to do. And I came in and everything was as set up as it could possibly be for me to be able to do what I was going to do, yeah. along with, you know, the, other, the rest of the band doing what they were going to do. And we could all hear each other really well. We could all, like, hear ourselves, know what we were doing, and just, like, it, it took a while. It, it took a lot of the technical difficulties that we have in our own, you know, personal home recordings and things like that, arranging our own uh, music and <clears throat> developing it, and the kind of things that we struggle with on a personal band level, making, you know, a recording that sounds excellent and reflects what we imagine we're doing in our heads and when we come in here and instead of imagining it we hear playback and that's what you know we're thinking of so it's 
it's pretty amazing to have somebody who can actually deliver that. Yeah, it's kind of like the sound that I imagine in my dreams and um, when we're playing at rehearsal and in the in Faith's basement where we practice, which is a, a great space and um, we're lucky to practice there, but you know, there's always kind of a, an ideal in your head and so to just be able to walk into that and play in a room with people this talented and well equipped is really a dream come true and it's it's like the uh, the fruition of lots lots of dreams and and mm-hmm. I was the hard best work. that yeah hard work and the, the in that room it's it's definitely the the best room sound I think we've ever played in so totally. by yeah. I mean by by far yeah I mean, there's no doubt that Guilford sound is kind of like um, and this is how I've explained it for the last year and a half I guess because we met Dave a while ago um, with Carton, but um, and what does life? But but this is like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, man. If you're into Mexican music, yeah. this is mm-hmm. you want a golden ticket. <laughs> yeah, you did. And we can't thank you enough, Dave. Oh, my and, pleasure. Um, it's just so so amazing that you've lent not just this amazing space and all of the expertise that's gone into building it and equipping it, but also all of your time. Um, not just with us this weekend, but in prep and in preparing for all this. It's just absolutely amazing, and no musicians could um, could feel more blessed than we do being here. Um, and definitely check out um, Guilford Sound, yeah, for sure. It's a great The uh, guy who was engineering the set was reacting pretty strongly, oh. and he just walked into the room. Yeah. Get behind the couch. I did, I did. Tell us what that. Oh, God. <laughs> you worked really hard. Just do that. Oh, yeah, right. like I'm taller than everyone. Just yeah. like <laughs> on your knees. Speak, my reaction. speak, man. It's amazing. Uh, I d- I had never heard the band previous to this day where I'd heard Carton before we had tracked them, so I just went into it totally not knowing what to expect and got hit with exactly what I liked. So it was it was incredible. You know what I mean? Thanks, man. That's yeah, I want to give uh, props to this guy, Matt, because I mean he's really been at the helm of the multi-track recording aspect of the whole thing. I've just been trying to make sure that the monitors don't feed back in the other room while they're where they're while they're recording, but um, he's capturing it in the other room. So um, and he also spent many hours with me just setting up and running everything and experimenting, moving stuff around. We you know we've we moved things. We've tried the drums in different spots and just you know moving the baffles around and yeah. There's so, a lot of collaborative head scratching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, why isn't this working? Why does this work? You know, and a lot of trial and error. Usually, like, if when one of us doesn't have the answer, the other one is able to come up with something. Mm-hmm. These guys are so. a dynamic duo. Totally. Of awesome. <laughs> like, it, no problem. <laughs> that, that might be, be the best part of all. The highlight. The highlight of this is working. Can get fixed, no doubt about Relationship. it. Relationship. Like, put your trust in these guys, no doubt about it. So, from the band's perspective, the highlight is there. Yeah. Of this duo. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. I mean, so this, the space is so wonderful, nice. but if the space was wonderful and the people sucked. The right. fact that they both have like a passion for sound and uh, communicate in a way that's really proficient and immediately you came up with the reverb amp to take the vocals and put it through the reverb amp and it's a sound that you always want. And on a board you can mix it however, but to come through that warmth and to have the, the tone ring out, it was a good ear. And that's what you're getting. I mean, that's what... Yeah, it helps you perform better. So, and, yeah. You know, I mean, that's really, we, we wanted to, we, we have four bands, two days to do four bands is a lot of time. Yeah. And they don't have want the same either. Right, yeah, songs. so I wanted to have enough time, at least an hour, if not more, of time to really make sure um, everybody could hear each other and that the ants were at the right level and everything, you know. So actually, Carton came in the day before, <laughs> Carton came in the day before, you know, to really work out a lot of the kinks, and uh, I didn't. <laughs> something's going on. Yeah. So.
You guys have been putting out pretty consistently at least a release a year, a full length release. Uh, no more and less. Quite a bit. Yeah. Like we, we mostly just record. We don't really play out too much because mm -hmm. um, we're all hermits. But uh, yeah, we our, our usual style of making music is just, just like getting together and jamming in, this, in Derek's basement and then like recording every session. And then when we have a good collection of songs, we just put it out as a release, and it's super minimal effort. Just like, if this sounds good, let's put it on an album, and that's it. It's not a bad point. Yeah, we don't really do like an official, let's record these songs and get them out. It's just if there were more venues, would, we be, would you be playing out more? I mean, that's Derek. Yeah, I knew you were going to me. <laughs> but, it's your fault. I mean, yeah, yeah, all right, I'm a little picky. At this point in my life, uh, you know, getting older, slowing down, and uh, so it has to be fun. Like even if even if you know there's the offer of money, it has to be fun, or I'm not really interested. And so, yeah, I'm picky about the places and, and the events, um, which was part of why we started putting on our own events um, for a while. Right there in Windsor, we were doing our own little Wood Off Life uh, mini festival thing. Mm -hmm. thing. Next to the tracks, very cool. Yeah, those were a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not driven to like, uh, you know, drive long distances on ice to play really late in some hole in the wall or every hole in the wall out there. Uh, I'm just kind of, kind of over that. And which was that dance in the background? <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? I was just giving you silent agreement. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I appreciate the support. You know. Because, yeah, you got to stay happy, you got to stay balanced, you got to have fun, and, uh, I, uh, like, we don't do this for a living, so... Right, right. Um, we don't need the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah, right, our existence, we don't depend on this, you know, which is a solid plan, I should say to everybody out there, like, <laughs> don't try to make a living in the arts. But, um, yeah, playing, playing with these guys and everyone who's played with us in the past, you know, Brendan, Davis, um, it's been the most fun I've ever had musically. It's, it's the best band I've ever been a part of. I'm on the back. <laughs> Where's my back pattern? It's caught in my throat. All right, we had. No commitment. Right in the right. Mid verse.
Messi Week after week Said you're glad to see me With that twinkle in her eye And I saw a sweet smile We in her life Everything feels right in a voice It's such an angelic sound I give her my heart for a penny a pound Mercy But I would say that uh, uh, another factor of it is the fact that 
you know, three of these guys have been playing music together for 15 years, maybe even more than that. And it's been a really long time. Well, the Pilgrims is one of the oldest bands in the Wat Doth Life collective roster, right? Probably. Yeah. 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 We start, I think we're at uh, 2010, which is yeah. like uh, almost seven years ish. Good math. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And, and the super fan mentioned iterations. Uh, Chris in the chair used to be the singer. Yeah. Chris, Chris on in the, the groin. Oh, this Chris. Chris left. For the stage, purposes of right? this left. interview, Tag you're Chris. all Chris. <clears throat> yeah, we can all be Chris. The other Chris didn't used to be in the band, neither did the other Chris. Right. And no. <laughs> 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 you have anyone who plays keyboard named yeah. Chris. <laughs> That'd be great. So we, and then it, we're well, looking for another yeah, Chris. Yeah, is what we're trying to get at here. We actually had a female Chris that joined the band for two songs. Okay. Yeah, we I, we we did two albums as a four piece with our friend Davis, who moved to Boston and uh, is coming back. My baby. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Season Working seven out. of the Pilgrims. <laughs> <laughs> Who's coming Stay back? Tuned. And then uh, we kind of went through some like change. We did a three piece between this Chris, mm -hmm. that Chris, and this Brendan. Yeah, not Chris. And this not fun. And then we decided, hey, <laughs> that's too much fun. Let's go to <laughs> let's go to five Other people. <laughs> and then we made Kyle be in the band because. Because I wasn't doing anything. He has no will. <laughs> and uh, just do whatever he wanted to do. And we needed his bass. Yeah, 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 you needed my bass. Yeah. A place to play. And then we were And then, and then uh, Rosie uh, played uh, sticker keyboard for a while. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't work out. So we're like, hey, do you want to like not do that? What else could you do? Oh, mouth. You have a like, mouth. mouth. And you're tall. So, you know, like, these these. You have things. a great mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one thing everyone keeps telling. You have telling. such a pretty mouth. You be tall and use your mouth Robert on stage for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty much it. That's pretty much the history. Yeah. And now we're five. Take your keyboard. Yeah. 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 <laughs>
fucking me.